In the beginning, Eru the One, whom the elves call Iluvatar, created the Valar, beings of power and beauty, to be sub-creators in the great music which Eru showed them. And Melkor was the greatest among them, but he sang his own theme, and Eru contained his discord three times, and then stopped the music. Then he said, Behold your music, let these things be. And the Valar knew that Eru had made a new thing, Arda, the world that is. Then the Valar took shape and hue, but the earth was as yet unshaped and dark. So began their long labors for ages uncounted and forgotten. But Melkor worked also, and he desired to take dominion of Arda. Then Nirvana sang a song of power, and two trees of light came forth, one with flowers of silver light, the other tree bore a fruit of yellow flame. Thus Valinor was filled with light, but Middle-earth remained dark and was lit only by starlight. Now the Valar looked for the hour that Iluvatar had appointed. Then at last the first-born children of Iluvatar awoke in Middle-earth, the elves. So the Valar brought them on a great journey across Middle-earth and over the sea to Valinor in the west. At that time the Valar also chained Melkor and sentenced him to the halls of Mandos, which none can escape. But after his term was complete, he feigned penitence and a desire to heal the hurt he had caused, so he was released. Then Melkor taught many things to the elves, and Fionnar the Greatest made the Silmarils, capturing the light of the two trees within three brilliant gems. But Melkor robbed Fionnar of these, and with Ungoliant the Great Spider killed the two trees of light. Then he fled and escaped to Middle-earth. So Fionnar and his seven sons took an oath to follow him and take back the Silmarils. They left Valinor against the wishes and warnings of the Valar, slaying some of their own elf brethren to gain their ships. A great company of elves also returned to Middle-earth on foot by way of the grinding ice in the north, and Galadriel was with that host. In this way the great elven kingdoms began in Middle-earth. Now the first age began in this way and the latter children of Iluvatar awoke, men who ventured out from the east. Many of the elves were slain in their long war with Melkor and passed into the halls of Mandos until the end of the world, though they would otherwise have been immortal. By the end of the age, all three of the great elven kingdoms were discovered and destroyed by Melkor's armies of orcs, dragons, and balrogs. With Melkor triumphant, many feared that all Middle-earth would soon be subjected to his will alone. So Eärendil the Mariner sailed against the decree of the Valar to return to Valinor, to seek aid against Melkor, and his petition was heard but he himself never returned to Middle-earth. Then Melkor was finally defeated by the Valar and sent out into the void beyond the world. Thus the first age was ended and the second begun. At that time, great gifts were given to loyal men. An island in the midst of the sea, Numenor, and longer life than other men. But in Middle-earth, Sauron, the greatest servant of Melkor, remained and carried on his master's work, becoming a new Dark Lord. Sauron at first took on a fair appearance among the elves, and he showed the elves how to make rings of power. And secretly, he made himself a master ring to rule over their wills. But when he put on his ring, the three greatest ring bearers perceived him and taking off their rings, hid them. 
But a great king of Numenor came to Middle-earth and defeated Sauron, and took him as prisoner back to Numenor. So Sauron began to corrupt the kings of Numenor from within. He convinced the king to sail west and assault Valinor to gain immortality for himself. Because of this folly, Valinor was removed from the world, his fleet perished, and Numenor was taken under the waves of the ocean. But some loyal Numenorians escaped to Middle-earth and set up the kingdoms of Arnor in the north and Gondor in the south. Sauron also returned to Middle-earth. In the last alliance of elves and men, Sauron lost the Master Ring and was defeated and lost his bodily form, except for one lidless eye. As the Third Age began, wizards came to Middle-earth from Valinor to guard against Sauron's return. But he returned to Mordor after three hundred years of watchful peace. After a time, Aragorn, the rightful heir to the throne of Gondor, was born and placed in hiding at Rivendell with Elrond. And Gandalf sent Bilbo, a hobbit, with thirteen dwarves to retake their kingdom in the Lonely Mountain. On the journey, Bilbo found the Master Ring.